but he's a tough-minded kid. Um, and you know, it's funny when we all started that summer. I never, I never, I didn't envision this. And then, like a week into practice, I'm like, God, this kid's gonna start. He's been durable, obviously. You know, knock on wood. He stayed healthy, and um, you know, he's got this warrior mentality. And this is really the first year where I've actually had to rest him in between games, not practicing as much because uh, he was just. I mean, I used to hear him say all the time, Anthony could play two games. Uh, I don't know if he can do that anymore. He's getting a little bit older, but he can definitely play one really good one. What about Person that's like one step closer to the My bad, guys. What, what about him as a freshman made him ready to start? Well, you know, he, they play, he played in the WCAC, which I think is the best high school league in the country. Uh, he played for a great high school coach who I think is going to be a great college coach someday. So he was prepared. Um, and uh, his dad raised him. Yeah, the toughness. So he, he was he was ready for it, and uh, and he wanted it. Yeah, but it's still been a pretty amazing streak. Coach, the Can you guys uh, hear me? The roughness that Stick got on Sunday. Yeah. Was that something you might have filed a complaint about, no. or just part of the game because it was excessive on Sunday? Yeah. So complaining is a waste of time for me. So it doesn't do me any good. So. Uh, but it was really like the big brother picking on the little brother and the parents were just letting him do it. So, guys got to do a better job. I complained the whole game, didn't do any good, but uh, I'll lose my mind on Wednesday if, if it happens again. So, um, uh, it'll toughen us up, make us better, but it wasn't right. How did he accept it? Well, he didn't, you know, he lost a little confidence throughout the game and I kept telling him, but Sticks will be fine, he'll bounce back. And he's had a heck of a year. Hopefully we can help them a little bit more, and hopefully, you know, they'll, hopefully the parents will be in the room <laughs> on Wednesday night. Coach, you took up the rotation at Ohio State. Was that more just game circumstance, or is that something that you'll look to continue experimenting uh, with? Yeah, I'm trying to it? figure it out, guys. I feel really good about six. I'm trying to figure it out from there. Chol was terrific, best minutes of the year. Hopefully Chol can continue to give us that, keep getting better, um, and he can be a, you know, a fixture. It was great. He played ten minutes, really good minutes. You know, the really good thing I liked about our minutes of the night were they're all around 30. You know, we lost the game, they were around 30, which will help us move forward. Mark, you had that game day environment in East Lansing a few weeks ago. You're obviously going to have it here. Do you, do you learn anything from yeah, spotlight stuff? I know you're going to ask me to ask it after Minnesota. Yeah, I'm not going to answer that. All right, Barry. I mean, I, I like it, Barry, but I don't want to talk about it. Minnesota is a huge game. If you want to call me Thursday, we can talk about it, but we got to figure out Minnesota. Mark, four games left in the regular season here, gearing up for tournament time. What do you want to see from your team during the stretch run that will let you know they're ready for the gauntlet of March? Yeah. Well, we're in the gauntlet, and, um, you know, we're in the grind, as I always call it. I, I think even though we lost the other day, we did some things pretty nice offensively. You know, we're, we're getting better offense, which I like. The one thing we didn't do was rebound the ball. And uh, that's getting a little frustrating because it's a mindset. Um, but just our identity's defense. We gave up 79 points to Ohio State. Now they made a lot of shots, but we can't be any good if we're going to give up 79 points. So we got to rely on our defense a little bit more and, and rebound better. And then I think our offense just continues to get better as the year goes on. Jackler's Law Group clients are happy clients, and here's why. Our lawyers are experienced, hardworking professionals who fight until you win and you pay no fees until we do. If you've been injured in a car, truck, or train crash, we meet you where you are and when you can. If you've been in a crash, don't wait. Call the big dogs now. Let us handle the insurance company so you can focus on healing, and you'll see why we were named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country. And what can you say about, can you say about Wiggins and yeah. Well, yeah, I was happy for Wiggs. He made six, made some big shots, made some tough shots. We need him to be aggressive. Uh, we need him to be confident, you know. And um, so it's good. Ayala starting to play. You know, that takes pressure off Anthony and Sticks. You know, I, you know, Minnesota's probably sitting there saying, "Wow, you know, it's a lot more to guard, a lot more to, to prepare for." Um, so that's good. And then Dante's making some threes and playing well. And, so it, it just makes us a better team and much harder to guard. Mark, 
the two of your losses this year coming in the back end of you know road, back to back road games and really tough environments and you know close contests. Do, do you worry about mental fatigue at all with your guys at this point? No, um, I think. Are we fresh? No, our tank's not full, but we're, we're, for this time of year, we're pretty fresh. And um, we do a good job, I think, between games, um, trying to get our guys ready. Um, it's hard. It's hard for everybody uh, this time of year. It's, it's just, you can't explain it. You know, just the travel. And things don't always go right with travel. All of a sudden, it's snowing. You got the ice. It takes another hour. To get, so there's a lot that comes with it. But we all go through it. And... Um, I think we I think we're pretty fresh to be honest with you for this time of year. What has the team shown Well Well, Hakeem started trying hard, really hard in practice about three weeks ago. And he's talented enough. And Hakeem's a smart player. And so what I want our bench to do is go in and play smart. And our top six guys are really intelligent. And I want our guys to go in there and I didn't like Hakeem shot. And if he does it again, I told him he won't play the rest of that game, so I don't think the team will take a bad shot when he gets in against Minnesota, but he's got size, he's got length, he can really pass it, and he knows how to play offensively, so I'm just trying to figure it out. Uh, I'm trying to get better. I like where we are. You know, I, like, I like where we are in league. I like where we are overall. I just want our team to get better, and I want us playing our best basketball as we move forward. What stands out to you about Daniel? He's a warrior. His length, his size. Uh, he's got great face-up game. He hit three, he hit three threes against Northwestern. He's aggressive on the low post. Good passer. Terrific rebound. He's good. He's, uh, I think he's being mentioned in the lottery or almost lottery in the NBA. So our league is. I mean, it's like every game. Is somebody has a really, really, really good player. So um, and so do we. But it's just it's it's every night's a challenge for for our guys. Mark, you, you talked to Roy during this season. It's tough to watch someone go through that. How, how would you handle it? How, how, how do you think he's... Well, I've talked to him more and I've texted with him. Um, we probably haven't talked as much. we talked a couple times. But we've texted a lot more this year. So he was there for me when I had seasons like that. I'm just trying to be there for him. I think the last couple weeks he's really changed his mindset. Still, no, it's still not easy for him, but you can tell he's much more positive with his approach. Uh, he's going to have a lot of really good players coming back, and he's got a top five recruiting class. So I don't think a lot. Of, I feel sorry for him because he's my mentor, but I don't think there's a lot of people feeling sorry for him out there. He's one of the all-time greats. I know he wants to get another one. He's got three. He's working hard. He's recruited well, and um, they won't be down long. Time for one more, guys. Okay, uh, can I ask you about Travis Valmont? I know he's a yeah. non-rotation player. What do you like about him? What does he bring to the table as a guy who doesn't play in games? Like yeah, so Travis is a terrific practice player. Um, I've said many times that I think Travis could play in a lot of Division One programs. He's improved so much. It's, it's frightening. Um, plays point guard on the practice team. Uh, really doesn't have a sub. Plays the whole practice. Uh, very smart player. Really good defender. Become a really good passer. And then, you know, he's the leader of our scout team. He's been through it. And then he's just, he's having fun, which rubs off on everybody else. So, smart kid, been a valuable asset to our program, and he's really thriving, you know, in his senior year. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.